But no, that's really good. I'm excited for it. Uh, next game is Laser Girl. Um, this one my... was. This this <laughs> is a game. This is a game. This is a game I like, but this is still a game. Uh, I don't think Kiki liked this game. <laughs> no, uh, Laser Girl by Sandwich Generation. So. I tried wrapping my head in, <laughs> in explaining what this game was to you. Uh, but I think that the, uh, the five second or the five, uh, not five, like the 10 word sentence really <laughs> encapsulates it. The fury of Bomberman with the strategic depth of an RTS. Yeah. A little bit of an understatement, but he, he's, he's right. So basically it's you versus two three four other enemies you have your home base okay they have their home base you have the ability to purchase reactors walls and lasers there's these little nodes on the floor like they're they're yellow you put a reactor on there it generates energy and like it develops this currency for you yep you then have to find where, like, I guess it's like a, like a power line going to an outlet off the yeah. edge of the, the board. But you have to put walls down leading up to that reactor. And the walls are like conduits for energy to flow through. And once you connect it, you have this constant stream of energy and currency being drawn out, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is connect as many reactors as you can to your home base. But the purpose is you have to drop these lasers connected to those reactors that are being fed by your home base, <laughs> fire it at the enemy base or at the enemy player. Because if looks... the enemy player dies, that's it. So you drop these lasers and they're like, oh shit, no, my home base. So you have to put a wall in yep. front of the laser or another or laser a bigger laser yeah. in front of the enemy laser and hope that kills it yeah you can use it like if if the lasers are the same like size they'll just cancel each other out and sit there but if yeah. any player upgrades the other one it overpowers the other laser and destroys it uh, i just saw in the trailer that you we were playing three players you can play like five players in this game like fuck shit gets fucking crazy in this game that is I, that is a hectic ass game, and I would be, I am terrible at it. I did not I like, like it. it at first, but then I started really liking it. Once I started, like, how, like, realizing how it worked, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this is really fun. And it got to the point where you were just trying to block my shit. And I was like, back up, back up, back yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> once you figured out how to play it, I didn't stand a chance. I just, yeah. Kept <laughs> you were like, I like, gotta put a wall here. I was like, fuck, you tried to box me in, and I was like, I'm just gonna move this. <laughs> and poor Kiki. I <laughs> She kept on just like dying arbitrarily because we were so focused into it. She's like, I don't know how to do this. And we were like kind of ignoring her because we were just like trying to kill each other. And yeah. then when one of us died, that's when we would help her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's it's not for me, but I'm I could I could I could be I could see with uh, seeing how many like how active your house always is. This game could be played a lot in your house. <laughs> yeah. I want to see how Scotty reacts to this because he is a huge Bomberman fan. This is like kind of like Bomberman a little bit. Yeah, it, it's got a little bit of Bomberman charm to it, but it is it is way more complex than that. Like, yeah. So he listens to our podcast. So Scotty, go check out Laser Girl. <laughs> yeah, go go do by that. Sandwich Generation. Go do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, the next game. I finally found the game that I was trying to describe it with. Uh, this next game is Maiden and Spell by Minnow Dove LLC. Uh, it is, I don't know if you would call this a fighting game, but it's, it kind of feels like one. It's a competitive shmup? I guess. So you have your two, like, maidens or witches or sorcerers whatever magicians they, whatever they magicians, are magicians yeah and they have they have a like a specific element or a series of uh 
spells that they can cast. And you always have two constant spells, two active spells, and then two cooldowns. Right. Um, so, for example, I really liked the, the dark-skinned earth chick. Yeah, the frog um, chick. Yeah. So she would, like, send out this bomb, and it would go straight after the individual. And mm-hmm. if I threw another bomb out, that, other, that first bomb would explode. And it would be have a large radius. Yeah, and you would have to constantly be like jumping from side to side so that you can entrap the uh, the yeah. enemy. And then you have another active spell that it never targets the enemy. It always goes to each side of it, but yeah. it's it's large and overreaching. So there's like this this fire s- sorcerer, and it just keeps on just creating like these balls of fire in a checkerboard style, and the yeah. enemy. And you can turn it off on. and then turn it back on. Yeah, and you have to keep on maneuvering through trying not to get hit. And then your cooldowns are used to either um, trap the enemy or get uh-huh. yourself out of a situation. So, like, for the, the Earth chick, she threw out this cat, and the cat would just eat all the bullets, and that would let me to get away. Yeah. Uh, there's also, I think she was an ice or electricity type. Yeah. But she had a cooldown where she could make a body double. And oh, nice. She can constantly keep on shooting. So you're getting shot by both sides. That's, that's some Morrigan bullshit. Yeah. And then uh, her other cooldown, she'd be able to teleport out of the way. Like, one was always offensive, and the other one was always defensive. Yeah. But it would, it would be played out in rounds. And each, each character had, like, four stops Lives, or four hits. Yeah. And then at the end of you know, each round you get all your points back or whatever, but it, it's, it's a competitive shmup. I think that's the best way as you put it. It was, it was really fun. Like we sat down, we, we played that on Sunday and we played a few rounds of it and I was like, yeah, I can, I can see playing this nonstop. Like this is really, really fun. And, uh, but yeah, uh, we didn't even play through all the characters either. So like, I would have liked to sit down and play this game a little bit more too. I sat down with the developer for a bit the day prior. Uh, uh-huh. Um, I I got to play with, with a lot more of the characters. It's a really good game. It reminds me a lot of Acceleration of Suguri. Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's ever played it, but it's kind of like the same concept. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm definitely going to check that one out then. All right, moving on. What do we got next? Oh, this is the one that had the really cool setup. Okay, this this had the best setup of the entire fucking con. Yeah, and I didn't right? get to play it because there was always someone there. <laughs> best fucking setup. He had this dude had like one huge TV, but then it was like connected to like six or seven smaller CRTs. Yeah, and it was all playing at the same time. It was super fucking dope. So this game is called Monolith Two by Vanishing Point. It is a monochrome uh, shoot 'em up. You you fly in this little ship, mm-hmm. but you don't actually like shoot bullets. What you gotta do is the enemies will show up and they'll shoot out a stream of bullets out at you. Yeah. And you have to fly super close to those bullets so that you could charge your energy and release like this discharge targeting them. And the targeting system is very similar to Panzer Dragoon Saga or Panzer okay. Dragoon. Or the Sonic Adventure minigame when you're in the tornado heading towards the egg carrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a lot like that, but it was more of like score attack. It it never quite ended. It, yeah. Oh, it it's just until you like died. It, yeah, it's until you die. Or at least that's what I thought. Because it was, I'm it's very fast games. paced though. It's a fast paced game. It looks really, really good though. I yeah. I enjoyed it. But that's yeah, really think, all I can say on it. It just yeah, it kinda, looks good. Uh, so the uh, the description on the junk because they didn't have a video on the uh, on the Magfest website, but it says my current long term project. Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, oh, it just says monolith. A screaming yep, fast one planet, hyper... one tower, one ship. Monolith Two is a screaming fast hyperkinetic arcade game about a legendary journey to the end of the world. All right then. That's cool. Let's see what Learn More says. Made by Sam Leotion. Yeah, you can play it on play it on my the, the only one I'm seeing. I don't see Monolith Two on here. 
on his website or on their website. I just see uh, Monolith One. Yeah. So. I mean, maybe we'll see more. He it looks like he's done a lot of smaller projects. Um, all of them, I guess, a little bit similar. A little bit, it looks like. They go with a similar looking art style, looks like. Yeah, it, it's kind of. I don't. It's gonna sound fucked up to say this, but his display was far more remarkable than the actual game itself. His display was really. Everyone was like, his Dude. display was really fucking cool. I don't know how he linked all that shit together, but it was really, really cool. Yeah, and I'm not trying to like downplay the game itself. I'm just bad at it. The game, the game looked great. I'm just bad at it. That's a story. Yeah, that's your. That's what was the the uh the freaking. Motto, motto of this weekend at first it was show me your balls show me your balls <laughs> oh man all right so what we got next this next one oh yeah this next one i remember this next one this next one is called uh is it needle rink need or uh, yeah needle ink need or ink need or ink micro games yeah uh it's a uh it's a warioware style game but with toho characters Yep, I That's played this last it. year. Yeah, at Magfest 2019, and it made my top seven games because I did I pulled seven games out of a hat. Yeah, and said that these are the best ones, and this one is one of them because it's really really good. Yeah, I mean I love the little micro quick games like it's just really fun. Uh, the Toho aesthetic is like okay, I understand. That's obviously the developer's passion. Uh, I'm so it's actually it. not one developer. It's a, it's a community that's making these games. Oh, is it really? I guess they're yeah. all making their own little indie, mini games, and then they put them in all together. Yeah. So the update between last year and this year, I think he said something like 15 or 20 new mini games added to the game. That's pretty cool. Is, it's pretty cool. Um, I didn't get a chance to sit down with the new build, um, but I have it on Steam. It's oh, okay. still in early access, but I can access it at any time. I'm going to give it a shot. Um, uh, game's great. That's that's all I can really. Fucking yeah, because if you think about it, like in these things, you don't need like two hundred games or anything like that because you need probably like a good solid thirty games, I would say. Because the whole thing about it is, is play. It's the reaction time. Yeah, and then once it speeds up more and more, then that's what's gonna happen. Is you're gonna mess up, and then that's mm-hmm. yeah. So, because if I remember right, in the WarioWare games, there wasn't like I'd say there was probably twenty five, maybe thirty different games, maybe a little bit more, but I think there was there was quite a bit more. Was there? Okay, yeah. uh, but I love those games. I, that's the one game that I'll still bust my SP out and just play is uh, WarioWare Inc. I love yeah. it. So yeah, check this one out. You said it's already on Steam, so you can yeah, it's everyone already can, on Steam. You can download it. There you go. Uh, speaking of really good games, One Step from Eden by <laughs> yep. Thomas Moon Gang. Uh, this was my game of best in show for MAGFest 2019. Uh, and it's still really good. One of the best games. All right. Um, they had definitely one of the larger booths in the indie booth, in the indie area. Yeah. Everyone knows who Thomas Kang is now at this point, at, at least in the indie community. Like, Last year was his breakout year, and yeah. it was huge. Um, he went to GDC. He won Best Indie Game at GDC. Yep. I think he went to the Tokyo Game Show. He won Best wow. Indie Game at Tokyo Game Show. Jesus. Like, they know who the fuck he is, you know? And it's, it's, it's a solid fucking game. Yeah. Really fleshed out met all their Kickstarter goals. It's being released on Steam and PC. Um, and this this year, they really focused on the PvP aspect of it. Yeah, I saw and the updates on that. It's really good. So, it's... like, each character, I want to say that there's maybe 10 of them. Each character has, like, their own set of spells that they use and then five other random spells that they just throw in there. Uh, and each character has, like, their own static ability. So, like, the main character, she can revive after being killed and continue to fight with half health. Uh-huh. Uh, there's this uh, mechanic chick that uh, she doesn't actually have any static abilities, but she could drop turrets and keep on repairing the turrets with shields. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was game, one of the ones in the in the early one. You could get one of her. I think you could get her. You get a shield girl. Yeah, there's that ice I mean, chick too. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, I, I miss her sayings from the older builds because she'd be like, uh, uh, I was like, she was really snooty. Despacito. Yeah, she played yeah. played Despacito for me, and then she'd kill you. <laughs> it yeah. was great. Um, but no, one step from Eden. We I didn't really play it this time, but I was like, I don't need like I've streamed it so much i'll play the demo's mm -hmm. pretty available and like we said it's already it's very well known so yeah that that game is just top tier it's it's just mwah. it's good yeah so it's, it's a good uh, game so this one you played and i watched you play it and it was fun to watch you play this okay yeah uh shot in the dark by dennis mccory this was surprisingly really fucking good yeah Three colors. <laughs> that was all it is. So it's perfect yep. for you. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I surprised him by doing so well in it. There was few, there was a sometimes he was like, oh, okay. There's a lot of people that take a lot more time to get through there and all that stuff. So yeah. It, so I didn't think it was difficult because I was anticipating there being some fuck shit around the corner everywhere that I went. You play Dark Souls, uh, so... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just expect the worst at all times. So I was able to catch, like, the little details of, like, oh, there's a creature here. He's going to fucking kill me. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a side-scrolling platformer. You have a gun. It's point and click. There's these monsters that hide in the dark and then will come out of fucking nowhere and eat your shit. Yeah. Um, there's well, other... It works off of, like, shadows and stuff like that. Like, it works... Yeah. So you have to like pay attention. You can't just. This is not like a rushing through game, especially on yeah. your first playthrough. Uh, it's just, it's really fucking good. They had two uh, games I, there. They did. I don't remember the name of the other one. It was called uh, a Hex something. No, no, no. The last Hex was a different developer. It was on the the, the one next to them. It was on the other side. They actually okay. so they actually had three games at this booth. Um, oh, wow. He has another game called The Slime and the Sword which I did not get a chance to play. I didn't either. And then I don't remember it was him or a buddy of his, but they did a game jam, like a 24 hour game jam where it was this old man who'd have to watch after his sheep and they couldn't leave the screen. So what you would do is at the end of the day, you would get money based on how many sheep you saved for that day. Okay. Making sure they didn't like run off screen. Cause if they run off screen, they're gone forever. Right. And then with that money that you would get at the end of the day, you can build a fence, you can uh, buy food because every single day you and your wife have to eat. Gotcha. Um, you can buy like little upgrades. But the thing is, is that it gets progressively harder, especially right. since you have wolves in sheep's clothing. So you have <laughs> to push them out while your dumbass sheep are trying to run away. Shh. And it's never ending. Sheep are dumb. <laughs> sheep are dumb. Over people, but no, people, shot in the dark. It's a sheep. really good game. It's it's a gothic style uh, horror platformer. You got little snipers that try to shoot you. At the uh, end of the level, you have to fight this uh, super demon that's been summoned, and but you don't get a chance the, to fight that yeah. boss. That's where it ends. But it's it's pretty it's pretty fucking dope. I enjoyed yeah. it a lot. The the creator was there, and the audio guy was there too. Yeah, and uh, that was that was cool. I watched that was like one of the first ones we talked to on Friday. I think it was like we walked by once everyone started like the developers started coming in because we got there really early. And mm -hmm. uh, but no. Yeah, you should go check that one out, too. What we got next? Oh, we're getting there. We're getting to the one I want to talk about really badly. <laughs> we're almost there. Uh, yeah, there. This one's on you, too, because I played this in too many games, but I don't think I really liked it that much. Yeah, so I didn't get a chance to play it either. I just know that there's been an update to it, and I really want to play it. I reached out for a new build of the demo. Uh, Sons of Raw by Feral Hound Games. It's a tower. Def it's a competitive tower defense game Okay. where you choose a god, and then your bases are on different sides of the map. And like any other tower defense, you would send out different types of unit. they, right. units, they do different things. What the new change is is that they rebalanced each of the gods uh passive cooldowns. Yeah, I think so passive. one of the gods was like broken. I think it was Anubis or something like that. Or it might have been I don't Ra. remember. 
um like isis like i think isis recovers units or heals units uh raw gets stupid amounts of gold yeah um it's I just wanted to name drop them because I did enjoy it last year. I want to give it another shot. I just had Didn't not have yet time. to do so. Another game I want to drop on. Um, it's again, it's another game that's not really my aesthetic, but it's an interesting type of game. It's called Starcross by Cognito Games, or Cog Contigo Games. Okay, I don't it have is- that one on my list. Yeah, no, I'm reading it off of the MAGFest uh, website. So I'm not going to get into the story because I wasn't really paying attention. Um, (laughs) But you have these – it's a cooperative game. So you and your partner choose a character. I I guess you could choose a character. Uh And you have, like, this orb that will bounce between the two of you. And then enemies will pop up, and they'll try to attack you. And what you got to do is you have to maneuver your way outside of those enemies so that they're in between your line of sight. And this orb will go and damage them back and forth. Okay. Now, there's different things that you can do to make that orb go faster. You have special moves. You have an ultimate ability. It's it's okay. And this one was at MAGFest? This was at MAGFest. This huh. was, it was kind of hidden. It, like... There was this one area in the indie showcase room where everyone was like pitching tents, and yeah. they had they had like these uh these lawn chairs with little yeah. furry fluffy blankets on it, and that's where you had to go find it, or what? Maybe it was a bean bag. Anyway, it was it was hidden, All right. and like I may not be in love with the game, but I think it's interesting enough to at least talk about it. Okay, cool. Uh, I didn't play uh, this. I didn't even see this next one. Which what what is it? The uh, the come up. Okay. So <laughs> I see the potential in this, but okay. it's really really raw. I'm looking it, at it, the video right now, and it's like I don't know what's going on. So I thought you were a bug at first. Oh, is the camera just it's, zoomed out really far? No, that's just the way that the camera is. It goes in and out. Um, so the way that the developer that I spoke to, um, they're called Brotherly LLC. Uh, the come up is a coming of age tale about a teenage boy. Um, I didn't really get too much further in as far as the story is concerned, but he's I think he's supposed to be part of a warrior tribe and getting ready to to fight but they're like i think they're they're supposed to be like super super tiny people because yeah because i see a fight mushroom spiders and... and yeah you fight spiders and shit um but it's a metroidvania style game uh you get powers like a, a laser beam or a you laser like jetpack and shit too yeah you get a jetpack you get a glider um the game feels good to play it's fun okay. to explore um it is rather linear but it's it's very it's, raw. <laughs> it's a very raw game. This game, it shows a lot of promise. That's all I'm going to say about it. It's, okay. It shows a lot of promise. I, I want to see where this goes a year or two from now. Well, maybe we'll see it at MAGFest next year. Yeah. So. Um, there's also another game before that that I want to talk about, Super Multitasking. Oh, yeah. I did. yeah. We, we did play that one. That one's another like kind of like a WarioWare kind of game, but it's got instead of you looking at one screen, you got four screens you're looking at, and each yeah. of the each of those little squ- screens they require you to use different buttons on the jo- on the controller. Mm-hmm. So like the left uh, the left square screen is the left stick and the D pad. The, the top rectangle uh, screen are your bumpers and your triggers. You got the middle one is your face buttons, and then the right is your right stick. And that got fucking confusing at some parts. <laughs> yep. But it was I, fun. I didn't last long. I think I lasted a minute. You still beat me. I think you beat me by like eight seconds. So, yep. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that one's interesting. I don't know who the developer was on that one, though. That is... YYR games. 
that can't okay. be the way that you feel it. But anyway. Your Y Y R game your games? Your your games. Your games. <laughs> your games. But uh so here we are. We're at the one that we've been wanting to talk about since the beginning. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I could talk about this game and just be done with it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, them fighting herds. So when we sat down at first, we were like, this was the first game we sat down at yep. uh, on Friday. We saw it and I was like, oh man, this is like a My Little Pony fighting game. I don't know how yep. I'm going to feel about this. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to sit down and I'm going to play it. This is a fucking good game. <laughs> This is a good fighting game. It is a very uh, good game. Every character has a different, like, not aesthetic. What do you call it? Uh, technique, like they, a style. Yeah. Like, I've played a few fighting games. I've played a few indie fighting games. Um, a lot of them are Smash-inspired. Yeah. I have, I've, you know, very rarely do I find an indie game that's, like, traditional fighting games nowadays you know there's a uh, there's sonic smackdown and uh origins of the storm or storm of origins i don't remember which one it was um but them fighting herds man arizona is the best character <laughs> arizona's nasty she's so arizona's good nasty. so there's there's a llama who i yes. want to say is like your faust character she's like she's, she's very goofy and cartoony and yeah uh there's Arizona, who is probably the most honest character. Yeah, no she's the cow. No s- no special abilities. She's just like, yo, let me get close. Let Rush get down, close. knockdowns, combos. Uh let me you throw have... this lasso and pull you in. Yeah. Uh pull you out of the air too. It has anti airs and shit. Her elbow is really good. Uh you have the little sheep that is like I'd say like the Jacko. She's the setup character. Yeah. Where she's setting up her, she's a little scared uh, she lamb. These, these dogs. Yeah, she she summons like little bitty like sh- uh, sheep herding dog like puppies, and then like you can summon like a big ass dog and shit too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you have the uh, I don't dragon. know what the, the uh, it's just a dragon horse is what it looked like. And, yeah. But the, but the first thing we noticed, I said, Chris, don't touch anything. I said, just look at these idle animations. Like these idle animations are beautiful. Yeah, they're they're that that's that a good character ass game. that character's like the uh the the very aerial like combo kicks and stuff like that. I'd say like a very yeah. like Fei Long kind of character and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I liked Tian Shao. That I think that's her name. Yeah, uh, she's like the the fire dragon horse thing. Yeah. Uh, then you had I I don't know what she is. I want to say that she's a ram. But she has like ice abilities. Yeah, she's she some is, kind of she. I think she's like a deer though, like a reindeer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, she's she's a deer. She's a reindeer or some shit like that. Um, she is totally Jin from Blaze Blue. Oh yeah, you cannot tell me different. That is a Jin, like recreation. She is a jo- like zoner projectile character. Yeah, like you could say like, oh, it's like Kai Kisuke, but no, it it is Jin from Blaze Blue, like one hundred percent. Ice magic, like her, her, like she like, summons giant icicles to push you back. Yeah, back dash bolt or bash that dash. only work at a distance. Yeah, Yo. and then like, you have, uh, which is like the one that we saw first. That is, it is, uh, Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. Her yeah. name is <laughs> is Oleander. Uh, but yep. she's uh, she's interesting. She's kind of like a zoner too, but she has good like. Uh, up close weapon or she's uh, short stuff. to mid range. Yeah, I want to say she's short to mid range. But she's very like if she gets hit hard enough, she loses her spell book. Mm-hmm. And she, I, I'm guessing if she loses her spell book, she can't do as much stuff. But the spell book is always like crawling towards her, so that it's yeah. always, like I I never I think they might need to tweak like losing that being more important because it seems like you just get it back really really quickly. There's been times where I've noticed that it takes a little bit for the book to get to you. Does it? It depends on how hard you're getting hit. Yeah, it depends on how hard you're getting hit and, like, if the opponent is seeing, like, I need to keep him away. So just keep pushing him away from the book. Because you probably, like I said, you probably can't do hardly anything without that book. Yeah. So. But no, Them Fighting Herds, it is by Main Six. 
Uh, it's already out. I think uh, it's out on Steam. You can, we I bought my copy from Humble Bundle because I, I wanted my to, copy as well. Yeah, uh, this game. I don't know if it's like only co-op, like local, or if there's online yet or anything like that. But this game is. I've been seeing a lot of people in the fighting game community actually talking about this game too. So, yeah. what was it? You sent me a picture of the top five fifty or the top fifty fighting games on Steam right now, and this is like number twenty nine. Yeah, it's on there. That's pretty good for like a game that's not fully out yet. <laughs> yeah, and I'm trying to get an interview with them with Mega Visions. Nice, like very nice. That's possibly in the works because me and Chris sat down. And I'm like, yo, just put your biases away for and play about this. five minutes and play this fucking game. And we we sat down, and it's it, it's a good ass game, man. It's it, good, man. Arizona is the Makoto of this game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, unfortunately, we have more games to move through. I'm losing my fucking voice, man. You are. We only got a couple more to go through. So, yeah. uh, so this next one that we've got, let's see. Uh, I didn't see anything about this one. It's called Typhoon Unit. It is or Typhoon it was Unit Junk Puncher. I. Did, I must. I might have saw it, but I didn't play it. Like I was yeah. so into Junk Puncher and Kickbot, but it's Typhoon Unit Butterfly Requiem by Ghostly Feline Games. Uh, this is a shoot 'em up. This is a it's... Toho shoot 'em up. <laughs> oh, I didn't know it was a Toho shoot 'em up. Well, it looks like dude, I always Bullet Hell. Let me rephrase that. Not Toho. It's Bullet okay, Hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a Bullet Hell game. This is a good ass game. Is it? Um, there was a game last year that I wanted to see a, an update on. I can't find a card, but it reminded me a lot of, of this game, Typhoon Unit. But this game, you swap between three different characters. You have, like, your fast character, like yeah. your standard fast uh, medium to high damage. Or like I would your say power character. Damage. You have your power character who is super slow but super strong can break down barriers and shit like that. And then you have your defensive character. Yeah. Does, does light damage, but is like really mobile and can cancel out different, uh, you can actually like, yeah. One of the moves I like saw that. was like just going through bullets and stuff like that. Yeah. Too. Um, it, it's a good ass game. Is it that that's a really well done game too. Like for a bullet hell game, like bullet hell games need to have the tools available for you. Like it has to have, a level of challenge it has right. to have a significant level of challenge but it's like dark souls if you're going to present the challenge it has to feel like i did something wrong yeah to, to fuck up right rather than I'm, or i was I'm too greedy like, yeah that's what this game is it's it's a good ass game as far as shoot 'em ups are, go- are concerned the the art style looks great you play as like these little fairies and Little, yeah, little fairy butterflies and shit like yeah. that. So, um, again, I don't play shoot 'em ups for the story, but I'm sure it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I regret not checking that one out. I did play this next one with you though. Uh, we both yeah. sat down and played this one. And uh, let me pull. This it was actually at the behest of uh, Kiki. She was like, "You have to play this game." Yeah, uh, it's called Way of Ray. I guess I say that right. Uh, yep. By Anthro- Anthropic or Anthropic uh, Studios. Uh, yep. And it's just like a little puzzle game. Like uh, it's puzzles with like uh, very not weird, but it's very like different characters. Like they don't look like traditional characters and stuff like that, but it's just a puzzle game. I, there were a couple times where I found myself, I was like, well, crap, I just got myself locked in this area. So I'd have to reset and back up on there and all that stuff. So, uh, but no, I, I got this pretty quickly. Like it was really fun. Uh, the demo was very short though, but they said they had a lot yeah. more to work on. The demo that they're showing on the website is is different than the one that was at Megfest. Yeah, because the the little monster creature that you play as it reminded me of Eduardo from yeah. um, Foster's Home for for imaginary friends. Oh, the big uh, the big uh, purple one. Yeah, yeah, he. Uh, a bit of that. Yeah, but this is a very like you have to like figure out like I can. I am not like if you're not the color of a gate, you can't get through that gate. So you have to go find the key. Uh, but finding the key isn't the the thing that you need. Uh, you have to find the key and then get it back to a certain area so that you can go through a gate and all that stuff. So, uh, but no, it, the demo was like maybe I mean if if you knew exactly what you were doing, you get through in like five minutes. But uh, it's interesting. Perfect. I'd like to see if what you're else. Like me, you 
are colorblind and you don't know what to do. Yeah, this might not be great for colorblind people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that one's called uh, Way of Ray. So check that one out. That one was pretty fun too. So, and I think that comes, our list comes to a close with that one. It does. 